In today's video, I'm going to be talking about an extremely, extremely important topic, and that is why 2521's ending is brilliant. I finished watching 2521 about a month ago, and I have just heard far too much 2521 slander since then. So many people have said that its ending is awful, but I beg to disagree, and I'm going to talk about why in this video. Spoiler alert, by the way, for those who haven't watched 2521 until the end. Don't say I didn't warn you. So before anything else, I need to talk about a vitally important element of the show itself, and it's something that a lot of people actually don't know about, and it's that the show 2521 is it's based on a song of the same title, actually. It's a really interesting reference, and I, I've never heard of you know a show being based on a song before. And if you actually look at the lyrics of the song, it's 2521 by Chao Ding, they're pretty emotional. I think the song has really beautiful lyrics, and if you read the lyrics, you will understand the plot and the story of the show, everything will just make so much sense. So in summary, the song is um, about the memories of the singer's young love and how at the moment she thought the love would last forever only for it to end in their early 20s, and specifically when either her or her lover is 25 and the other is 21. Now that's exactly what the show 2521 is about, and to put it in better words, as said by May LKM from Moynet, quote, the lyrics seem to evoke a sense of poignancy about reminiscing on memories from our 20s, the sweetness of youth with a tinge of regret as an older self. The song serves as a reminder to be present and live in the here and now so that our future selves don't become filled with regret." End quote. This person put my thoughts into a perfect combination of words. Honestly, I cannot think of a more perfect and accurate way to describe 2521, both the song and the show. So credits to May LKM, I'm sorry if I pronounced that wrongly. And just so you know, the song is actually played in the show itself. One of the scenes I remember is in the moment where he thought the female protagonist really truly feels that her love for Peggy Jin and ultimately her relationship with him is uh, or was pretty much on its deathbed. And I find this to be a really smart placement because this was the moment where it was over for her. Exactly when Izin was 25 and Hito was 21. And one of the lyrics in the song, it goes, What I thought would last forever, 25-21. Which meant it ended when he was 25 and she was 21. And in that moment where she's walking through the New Year festival and Izin actually promised to be there by New Year with her. He didn't end up um, going back to Korea. He though was just really, really disappointed and heartbroken. And I think there it was then that she decided, you know, it's over for her. And I guess playing that song during that scene sort of just reinforced that idea that she really thought her love for Izin and her relationship with Izin would last forever. But that's not what happened. So that's one thing I absolutely loved about how they created the story of 2521. But moving on to the actual ending. So what happens is Hito gets married and Ishin continues to reach new milestones in his career. There was a point where they had gotten in a really bad, ugly fight on the very verge of the relationship. Everything was just filled with anger and spite and emotion, but they ended up patching things up and they ended up splitting on good terms. Oh, this is the point where a lot of people have expressed their frustration in the form of incessant questions such as Who did he go to marry to? Where is Peggy now in the present time of the story? And most importantly, why did they have to go? Now, these were questions that I didn't ask as I finished up the one season long K-drama. And that's because, first of all, the first two, they don't matter at all. And the third question, the most important question I will get to later on. So why I say the first two don't matter is because, first of all, it doesn't matter who Hito gets married to. The point is they both loved each other. It didn't work out. 
and they just moved on with their lives. The key point of the whole show is her looking back at those, you know, beautiful free times as an older person. And that's why the show is, or the story is set in the present with Hido as her older self. And her youth is simply revisited through memories, access through journals that her daughter comes across and reads. Second of all, it doesn't matter where Izin is in the present, because the story is based on those memories. In other words, it's based on her perspective. The story is told in her perspective. And in the present, Izin isn't a part of her life anymore, only her past. That's why it doesn't matter where Izin is, the point is, he's not in her life any longer. And again, the show is about her reminiscing on her youth, and since Izin and her have grown apart, they're not a part of each other's lives anymore, Izin doesn't appear in the present timeline of 2521. So the further people who are wondering where Izin is in the present, and those who are asking for him to appear, he's not going to appear and it just makes sense that he doesn't appear. Because that's the story of 2521. It's not about the present, it's about her looking back at her past. Looking back at, you know, those good times. Now getting to the big part, I know that a lot of people are disappointed that Izin and Hido didn't end up together. But this is actually what I thought to be the most, one of the most brilliant parts of the story. It's actually the reason why the drama had left such a memorable impression on me, and it is probably one of my favorite K-drama endings, and one of the most realistic ones too. And the reason why I love this ending so much is that it actually reflects real love, as in this kind of stuff happens in real life, and they express it in such a poetic and beautiful way, and I just... I love it way too much. I'm going to explain my opinion on why I think this ending is just so amazing. Let's just be honest with ourselves. First loves don't usually end up being our last loves. No matter how much happiness and love there was, people don't usually end up marrying their first loves. Because realistically, there are just so many things in life that affect this and affect that. And, you know, things just don't go the way we expect them to. What 2521 is trying to say with their plot is that Hido and Izin were very, very important people to each other. And without having met each other, they wouldn't be the people they are in the present. And although it was certainly love, and although they they thought in the moment that this love was going to last forever, their circumstances and priorities just didn't fit. And that's okay. It's okay because the times when they did love each other were beautiful and they can continue to treasure and cherish those memories. But life goes on. She doesn't have to feel bitter and angry that those times are over, but rather thankful for the people in her youthful years for making her the person she is today, and also happy that there were times in her life as precious as these. So that puts an end to pretty much everything I have to say about 2521 and specifically its ending. Um, don't forget to check out um, the song 2521 by Chao Rim because it is a beautiful song. And don't forget to uh, look at the lyrics as well. Once you read those lyrics, you will understand why 2521 unfolded the way it did. Honestly, this video was sort of like a rant for me because there were just so many people that were talking about how terrible its ending was, but I just do not agree and I had to say out loud why, why it had such a good ending. I hope that was insightful and interesting for you in one way or another and Look out for my next video. Bye.